Whipworm disease, caused by the parasitic worm Trichuris trichiura, has been known to affect humans for a very long time, likely thousands of years. However, pinpointing the exact time of its first discovery is challenging. Whipworms, like many other parasites, have been a part of human history since ancient times, and evidence of their presence has been found in archaeological remains. The formal scientific recognition of whipworms likely occurred in the 18th or 19th centuries, along with the development of modern parasitology. This was a period when many parasites were being systematically described for the first time, thanks to advancements in microscopy and medical science. But the exact date or year of the initial scientific description of whipworms isn't readily available in common knowledge sources and would require more specialized historical research in the field of parasitology. Whipworms have been identified in human coprolites, fossilized feces, and other archaeological remains, which provides evidence that these parasites have been infesting humans for millennia. Such findings underscore the long-standing relationship between human populations and parasitic infections throughout history. Whipworm infection, caused by the parasitic worm Trichuris trichiura, is a process that begins with the ingestion of whipworm eggs. These eggs are typically found in soil contaminated with human feces. People, especially children, are at risk of ingesting these eggs when they consume contaminated food or water or when they accidentally put dirty hands in their mouths after coming into contact with the contaminated soil. Once the eggs are ingested, they travel to the small intestine. It is in the small intestine where the eggs hatch into larvae. These larvae then burrow into the intestinal wall, initiating their development process. After a period of growth within the small intestine, the larvae migrate to the large intestine. This is where they reach maturity and become adult whipworms. In the large intestine, the adult whipworms embed themselves into the intestinal wall. They survive by feeding on tissue secretions and partially digested food. Female whipworms, once mature, begin laying eggs. These eggs are then excreted in the feces of the infected person. If these excreted eggs are deposited in soil without proper sanitation practices, they can contaminate the soil and become a source of infection for others. The life cycle of the whipworm continues when these eggs, after spending several weeks to a month in the soil and becoming infective, are ingested by another person. Thus, the cycle of infection begins anew. Preventing whipworm infection revolves around good hygiene practices, such as regular hand washing, particularly before eating and after using the toilet. Additionally, ensuring safe and sanitary disposal of human waste is crucial. In areas where whipworm is prevalent, Public health measures aimed at improving sanitation and educating the community about soil-transmitted helminths are essential in controlling and preventing the spread of this parasitic infection. Whipworm infection, caused by the parasite Trichuris trichiura, can manifest in a variety of symptoms, which largely depend on the severity of the infection. In many cases, particularly with light to moderate infestations, individuals may not exhibit any noticeable symptoms. However, when symptoms do occur, they can range from mild discomfort to more severe health issues. Abdominal pain is a common symptom and can vary in intensity. Individuals with a heavy infestation often experience more severe abdominal discomfort. Accompanying this pain, diarrhea is another symptom that can occur. This can be particularly problematic as chronic diarrhea can lead to dehydration and malnutrition. A particularly severe condition associated with heavy whipworm infections, especially in children, is rectal prolapse. This condition occurs when the walls of the rectum protrude out of the anus, often as a result of the strain from frequent diarrhea and straining. For children who are chronically infected, the impact on their health can be more pronounced. They may experience weight loss and delays in growth, a direct consequence of the malnutrition caused by the ongoing infection. Additionally, since whipworms feed on blood and tissues in the intestine, heavy infections can lead to anemia, further exacerbating health complications. In extreme cases, individuals may suffer from Trichuris dysentery syndrome. This severe form of the infection is characterized by bloody diarrhea, profound anemia, and even the clubbing of fingers and toes. The severity and presence of symptoms are often related to the number of worms an individual is hosting. Lighter infections tend to be asymptomatic, while heavier burdens can lead to more significant health concerns. 
If there is a suspicion of whipworm infection, particularly in regions where the parasite is common, it's important to seek medical attention. Diagnosis typically involves stool sample analysis to identify eggs or adult worms, and treatment generally includes the administration of antiparasitic medications. Treating whipworm infection, which is caused by the parasite Trichuris trichura, typically involves a course of antiparasitic medications. The most commonly used drugs for this purpose are mebendazole, albendazole, and ivermectin. These medications are effective in disrupting the worm's metabolism, leading to their eventual death. The specific dosage and treatment regimen can vary depending on the severity of the infection and the patient's overall health. Mebendazole and albendazole are usually administered in a single dose. However, in cases of heavy infestation or severe symptoms, a healthcare provider may prescribe a longer course or suggest repeating the dose after a certain period. Ivermectin is another alternative, although it's less commonly used for whipworm compared to the other medications. In situations where whipworm infection is confirmed, it might be advisable to treat all members of the household. This approach helps prevent the spread of the infection, as whipworms can be transmitted easily among individuals living in close contact. After the treatment, monitoring and follow-up are important to ensure that the infection has been effectively cleared. This may involve stool tests prescribed by a healthcare provider. In areas where whipworm is endemic, the risk of reinfection is a concern, necessitating continued vigilance. Prevention plays a crucial role in managing whipworm infections. This includes adhering to good hygiene practices, such as regular hand washing with soap and water, particularly after using the bathroom and before eating. Proper sanitation, like using toilets and ensuring the appropriate disposal of feces, is crucial, especially in regions where open defecation is common. Beyond individual measures, in communities with a high prevalence of whipworm, public health measures are key. Improving sanitation infrastructure, providing access to clean water, and community education about hygiene can significantly reduce the incidence of whipworm infections. Consultation with a healthcare professional is essential for the correct diagnosis and treatment of whipworm infection. The healthcare provider will recommend the appropriate medication and dosage, tailored to the individual's age, health status, and the specifics of the infection.